what would you think of an option at the end of a video game that a pop-up screen shows up and allows you, the player of that game, the opportunity to tip the developer of that video game if you enjoyed the game and wanted to show your appreciation to the development team of that game? Would you like that kind of option? Well, in the crazy world we live in, former ex-Blizzard Mike Ibarra suggests players should be able to tip the devs of special games. Yes, you heard me correctly. And here's the article on IGN where Mike Ibarra, the former boss of Blizzard Entertainment, and he tweeted this as well, suggested that a post-purchase tip feature, tip feature, sorry, that would allow players to give 10 bucks, 20 bucks extra to developer of special games. So as you can see, the article goes on to say that former Blizzard president Mike Ibarra, and I, like I said, tweeted that he's often felt that upon completion of a particularly enjoyable singer player game, he'd like to give more money to the developers because it was worth more than my initial $70 and they didn't try to nickel and dime me every second. Now, Mr. Ibarra does say that most will dislike this idea. And if we look, here's his tweet and I'm not gonna read it all, but if you read all the comments that follow up for it, there's actually some people that actually agree with him. They're a, a small minority. The most and the majority of the replies are like, like this guy right here, Mike, bro, we call that DLC, you know, and a lot of them go on to talk about microtransactions and, and this, this, and that. So I wanted to discuss this today because I noticed lately there is a trend happening in the video gaming industry. And for example, the president of the developer of Grand Theft Auto hinted about players should be Play, paying for games per the hours they play a game and not just one flat fee. I'm starting to notice a trend where, <laughs> surprise, surprise, the developers of the games in the video game industry, some of them are putting this out in the space, in social media, about, you know, increasing fees and 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 more ways for them to make money now they're a business and they have every right to make money and they should one of their priorities sorry should be making profit however i've always stated i have no problem obviously with companies wanting to earn uh, money and make a profit however it's the way you go about it where i kind of draw the line in the sand now where am I going with this? Where am I going with this is the fact that the way video games are supported is it's one thing if we just paid a fee, we got the game and we played it. But we all know that there are additional revenue streams for video game developers, okay? Because if you look at what Mr. Ibarra says here, you would think games, game publishers, charge a fee for their product which is the game and then that's it it's over they, there's no more revenue streams for that game now in some small cases that may be true however for the majority of the top games today in 2024 there are multiple revenue streams with every game that could be expansions that could be dlcs <clears throat> and oh wait the big one microtransactions and i'm going to get into that in a little second um so this tweet this sentiment of mr Ibarra, the former ex blizzard entertainment boss is a little bit misleading in my opinion because video game publishers have 
multiple revenue streams, okay? So if it wasn't for that, then maybe I would entertain even contemplating such a topic. So what do I mean by microtransactions? Well, you know what I mean by microtransactions. We're all aware of them. But I want to show you, since this is an ex blizzard entertainment boss he would know these figures and yet still made this kind of comment which i'm still trying to figure out why he would make such well we know why he's in the industry so maybe he's trying to take care of some friends but i wanted to look at what activision blizzard makes from a microtransaction standpoint okay and as you can see here, this is their net revenue from 2014 to 2022, okay? And as you can see, the light blue is their product sales. So this is games being sold and their live services, I would imagine. And then the, the darker topper bar is in-game subscription and other revenues. And other revenues, obviously, I believe would encapsulate microtransactions and as you can see the actual selling of the game in some years was a third of what their um, other in-game subscription and other revenues were so for example in 2021 activision blizzard sold 2.3 billion worth of games okay sales and 6.5 billion, this is a million, boys and girls, this is a B billion in in-game subscription and other revenues, okay? So, for example, WoW has, for them, has a monthly subscription fee. That would be in the 6.5 billion. Other revenues includes microtransactions, so their Call of Duty franchise, their microtransaction skins, weapon skins, all that kind of stuff. The ma macro tra microtransactions in their other games all is in the other revenue stream. So as you can see, the games that are being made through Activision Blizzard, in a way, because I call microtransactions, to me, that's a way not only for a player to kind of flex in game, but a lot of people use it as a way to support the developers of the games they enjoy. Um, now, this may or may not be the case in Activision Blizzard's numbers. Maybe the uh, other revenue stream, which is part of the 6.5 billion here, is solely on players wanting to buy skins and DLCs and expansions and all that kind of stuff, right? However, a game that I think follows this model where players, there are avenues for players to support their their game, the developer of the game that they enjoy. And the first game that pops into my mind is Path of Exile with Grinding Gear Games, where it's a, fleet, a free to play game and the players, their, their form of tipping the developers, in my opinion, and their way of wanting to show support of Path of Exile and grinding your games for creating a game that they enjoy is through purchasing microtransactions in the game. Supporter packs, stash tabs, hideouts. A lot of Path of Exile players want to give back to grinding your games because they didn't pay a penny for the game and they have thousands of hours of enjoyment playing that game. So their form of tipping is purchasing in-game stuff to support GGG. And this is kind of where I draw the line in the sand to this kind of suggestion from Mike Abara. You already have built in this industry methods revenue streams for players to give back and say hey thank you for this game i'm gonna buy that hideout i'm gonna buy the stash tab package i'm gonna buy the supporter pack package because it's my way of giving back to them 
So th it already exists. And I have to say, after reading this article, I'm really surprised that an ex-Blizzard Entertainment boss, AAA studio, would even suggest something like this because he knows very well the billions of dollars that, for example, AAA studios make when it comes to microtransactions. So there's already mechanisms in the game for these studios to earn more money. Why should they tip on top of that? That's my opinion. I'd like to get yours because I think this is just another trend that slowly these these big bosses of video game studios are trying to slowly nip away at and eventually becomes the norm. And there'll be a day... It, it's, I would imagine it's Mr. Ibarra's hope that eventually not only are these companies making money on the sale of their product, of the microtransactions of their products, and then who knows? Maybe they make hundreds of millions of dollars of players who kind of accept this and have no problems tipping. Mr. Ibarra suggests 10 or $20 at the end of the game. I just wanted to highlight this thought process, this mentality of the fact that someone would even suggest that, in my opinion. Like I said, if you like a game, you you support them. That's how I do it, through microtransactions. And in Path of Exile's case, you go and buy their supporter packs or whatever. So I would love to hear what you think of Mr. Ibarra's suggestion and tweet about... He would love for video games to have a post-purchase tip feature in games so you can tip 10 or $20 if you like the game. I can tell you one thing, there ain't going to be no, if you don't like the game, can I get my money back? Anyway, let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Do you support this? Would you tip? Do you think this is a good feature and should be introduced in the video game industry? I would love to hear your comments. Anyway, let me know what you think. And as always, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. It'll help grow my channel and get my voice out there to a bigger audience. And I would love that. So thank you if you do. And as always, we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.